Hi, this lecture is about tarsal coalition, or what uh, we used to refer to in the past as peroneal spastic flat foot. What are the objectives of the lecture? We would like to speak about the pathology, clinical presentation, and the imaging of tarsal coalition, and then we're going to speak about the uh, treatment outlines for tarsal coalition. A good source that you can use is this book, Pediatric, Pediatric Orthopedic and Sport Medicine, a handbook for primary care physician. The pathology in case of tarsal coalition is an abnormal connection or bridging between two, two bones of the tarsal bone, as you can see here. This is calcaneus, this is navicular, and you can see here, obviously, there is an abnormal connection between them. This condition uh, starts usually as a fibrous or cartilaginous connection, and then with time, uh, this fibrous and cartilaginous connection will mature into a more stiff bony connection uh, around the age of 10 to 14 years, as we're going to see later. Uh, what is the instance of this condition? This is a fairly common condition. 5% of the population have a, some sort of a tarsal coalition. However, the vast majority of cases are asymptomatic and bilateral. Like you can see here, x-rays taken for a different reason. You can see that there is an abnormal connection in the oblique view between the calcaneus and the navicular. So as uh, tarsal coalition, 5% of the population, fairly common. However, most cases are asymptomatic and bilateral discovered accidentally uh, when taking an X-ray for different reasons. What is the clinical presentation? They usually the case present in the start of the second decade. Uh, it usually starts around the age of 10 years in cases of calcaneo navicular and around 14 years in cases of talocalcaneal, which we refer to as a subtalar coalition. And uh, this is the age in which the coalition starts to become stiff and um, start uh, to get a bony bridge between the two bones, so the symptoms start to appear. You can see this is a picture from uh, uh, my other book, uh, the, uh, Passing the Board. Um, you can see here in the CT, uh, there is coalition between the talus and the navicular, and you can see here what we, we usually refer to as the C sign. And we're going to speak about that in detail when we come to imaging. So a clinical presentation, usually around the age of 10 years for calcaneal navicular and around 14 years for cases of the subtalar or talocalcaneal coalition, because this is the time in which the coalition starts to get stiff and mature into a bony coalition. Uh, what is the clinical presentation exactly? It's in most cases stiff flat foot with foot pain. So it's going to be a stiff flat foot with a foot pain. You can see here, this is a picture for my book, a clinical picture showing flat foot for the patient. You can see too many toes here. You can see the vulgus deformity. This patient actually has calcaneo navicular coalition. You can see that in the oblique view, connection between the calcaneus and the navicular. In the lateral view, as we're going to talk later in the imaging, there is protrusion of the anterior process of the calcaneus, we call this the anteater because it looks like an anteater. So most cases present with a stiff flat foot with foot pain. Some cases will be just stiff foot with foot pain. They, they will not have a flat foot. However, most cases have a stiff flat foot with foot pain. There may be some history of recurrent ankle sprain. Uh, that happens because the, the foot is a stiff, so it is more liable and at more risk of getting into injuries. Um, and when you examine the patient, you will see decrease in the subtalar motion. We're going to show a video for that in the next slide. And when you examine the peroneal tendon, these are on the lateral aspect of the ankle. They, you will find them spastic and tender. And that's why the old name for this condition was uh, peroneal spastic flat foot. Uh, and uh, the spasticity is happening because the, these peroneal tendons are uh, firing uh, continuously and causing the pain and spasm. Uh, you can see here this video. This video will show you uh, the um, uh, decrease range of motion with the uh, uh, coalition. This patient has actually a subtalar coalition on the left side. You can see here very minimal range of motion as compared to this side here in which the patient has much more range of motion for supination pronation. So here supination pronation very limited compared to imaging. Uh, uh, we discussed that uh, briefly. We're going to speak about it here in more details. Uh, in the uh, calcaneo navicular coalition, this you can be easily seen in the x rays. So here's calcaneo navicular, here's an oblique view. Uh, you can see the connection very easily between the navicular and the calcaneus. In the lateral view, as we discussed, there is the anteater sign with protrusion of the anterior process of the calcaneus. It looks like an anteater. 
The one which is a little bit harder to detect is the subtalar or the telocalcaneal. In the lateral view, you can see what we call the C sign here, as you can see, and we saw before in the slide before. Uh, in a, in a CT or MRI will be able to show you the um, uh, deformity much uh, and the connection much easier. You can see it in the CT, you can see the coalition between the talus and the calcaneus. Uh, this is another X-ray, a lateral uh, view of uh, a slightly younger child. Uh, this was taken for a different reason, but you can see obviously here the uh, anteater sign, the calcaneus is protruding forward, indicating uh, development of the uh, calcaneo-navicular coalition. Um, here is another example. You can see the C sign here, very obvious. You can see it uh, here. This line here is the C sign and uh, the MRI show the coalition very easily healed, coalition between the talus on this side, calcaneus on this side. Uh, so what is the treatment? Uh, the treatment, if you discover this condition accidentally, uh, taking an x-ray for a different reason and you discover the coalition, no treatment is needed. Um, uh, if the patient is presenting with a picture for tarsal coalition, is presenting with a stiff foot with pain, and the imaging confirmed that this is a tarsal coalition, initial treatment is casting or bracing for a few weeks to decrease uh, the pain. And in most cases, this is more than enough to control the condition. However, if this fails to control the pain, patient may need uh, to have surgery. So if the condition is discovered accidentally, no treatment is needed. If the patient is presenting with picture for tarsal coalition, the treatment in the beginning is casting or bracing. And if this fails to control the condition, the treatment would be surgery. The surgery in the calcaneo navicular coalition is um, um, excision of the coalition. In the subtalar, which is between calcaneus and talus, uh, you get a CT and assess how much uh, coalition you have. If the coalition is uh, less than 50%, you can excise it. If it's more than 50%, in this case, uh, it's maybe better to fuse the subtalar joint. You can see here, this is a, a picture for uh, a calcaneo navicular uh, coalition. This is before the surgery. You can see very limited range of motion. Uh, and uh, here after the surgery and after excision of the coalition, you can see much, much more range of motion. So again, uh, for calcaneo uh, navicular, the treatment is excision of the uh, coalition for uh, subtalar or telocalcaneal. It depends on the coalition. If it's less than 50%, we remove the coalition. If it's more than 50%, we fuse the whole subtalar joint. Thank you for uh, watching uh, this video. All my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision.